if you try to slow down a fast protein, like changing whey into a mixture of whey and casein, doesn't seem to really do much. If you try to speed up a very slow protein by going from a whole egg to an egg white, again, it doesn't really seem to do much. And when we look at the totality of the evidence here, uh, it just doesn't look like it makes a lot of sense to, to lose sleep over how quickly or slowly your proteins are digesting, whether we're talking about a daytime feeding or a nighttime feeding. The really important thing here with any protein feeding is, like I mentioned earlier, we need to make sure that there's enough leucine uh, that we're going to get a nice robust spike in leucine whether it happens very quickly or it takes some time to accumulate in the blood that's not that doesn't seem to be a major concern we just need to make sure that in the hours that follow that feeding are we going to get a robust leucine response and essential amino acid response as long as those are accumulating in the blood and reaching relatively high levels uh, then we should be initiating muscle protein synthesis and we should have the raw materials to build new muscle proteins. Um, so we definitely want to get out of that mindset of trying to really micromanage these amino acid responses and these absorption times. It's probably a situation where, as you often say, the juice isn't really worth the squeeze uh, and all the stress that goes into it. So we need enough leucine, we need enough essential amino acids, we need good enough digestibility and absorption rates for this protein for allow, to, uh, to allow them to accumulate in the blood, but we don't need it to be optimized. We just need it to be good enough. It just ha We just need enough accumulation of those things to make it work. So a faster peak, a higher peak, more leucine, more essential amino acids, they will not always translate to better outcomes in the endpoints that we really care about, which is building muscle mass uh, or, you know, w insert whatever your goal happens to be. But mm -hmm. when it comes to hypertrophy, good enough is good enough when it comes to digestion rate, uh, absorption rate, digestibility, and, and the overall content of leucine and essential amino acids. So, uh, like I said, those are kind of the key things we're looking for. And it's really not difficult to find a protein source that enables a maximal or nearly maximal response that we're looking for here. Uh, you know, uh, so I understand why people like to look into some of the mechanistic research on, you know, plasma leucine responses or plasma essential amino acid responses and try to extrapolate. I certainly understand why people try to extrapolate from some of those very short window studies looking at muscle protein synthesis but when you look at the longitudinal studies looking at actually building muscle tissue over time frankly it just doesn't seem to matter that much so uh, i i kind of briefly alluded to that when i was talking about nighttime protein but i wanted to take a moment to elaborate and explain why i really don't sweat over it and then once again as i mentioned last week even if we found that all of this stuff mattered a lot uh you could maybe use that information at breakfast and then everything else goes out the window because when you're eating a, a particular protein source, if you have other things in the meal, other carbohydrate, other fat, other fiber, that's going to basically eliminate the utility of pretty much all the research I just mentioned because uh, mm -hmm. it drastically alters uh, absorption times. And the same thing goes for any previous meal. So if you had breakfast at nine in the morning and you're fretting over the speed of your protein source that you're going to consume, consume for lunch at like noon or 1 p.m., it you don't really know based on the research what the digestion absorption rate is going to be because it's going to be impacted by the previous meal anyway. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't make a lot of sense to stress over.